All right, Christian, well, this is such an exciting time for you. New team. Tell me what you see when you look at AC Milan. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm, uh, I mean, I just see a historic club. Um, obviously, one with, with lots of trophies and uh, just a team that, you know, that I, you know, watched growing up with a bunch of legends um, coming out of this club. And uh, yeah, I'm just really excited to be here. Something that you would mention a few times in your press conference is you just talking about, you know, your potential, the heights you want to reach, the level that you want to hit. How close are you to becoming that player that you want to become? Yeah, I think uh, I think I'm close to to where I want to be. I think the level that I'm at is uh, I think I have the ability to, um, you know, to reach those levels. And now it's just about showing it and showing it, you know, consistently, you know, week week in, week out, and uh, you know, have a great opportunity to, to do so now. You've also been really impressive just in the short time that you have been there up to this point. What has it felt like for you out there? It's, uh, it's amazing. It feels like a fresh start, obviously, you know, coming to a new club, a new country. Um, it really is kind of a new beginning for me, and I'm, I'm just really excited to, to have this opportunity and to get to you know, showcase it for, for such a big club like Milan. Now, your new manager, Stefano Pioli, he has been raving about how impressed he is with you already in such a short time. And when you were discussing him, you said that he made you feel like he wanted you there. How does having that real confidence from your manager also enhance your performance as well? Yeah, it's super important. I think when you have that trust, you know, from your teammates, from the club, from the manager, um, it really does give you a lot of confidence and just allows you to be yourself and um, you know, use the qualities that, that you know you have, you know that what's got you here and uh, you know they see, they see that in you and they want that to be a part of their team. So for me it just gives me that, that extra confidence to, to express myself and to uh, yeah, hopefully um, you know, play really well for these colors. Mm -hmm. Now obviously I know that you had you know, many potential options, but what is it about AC Milan that enticed you the most? What did you hear from them that really resonated? Yeah, I think it's it's what you said. I think um, I did have that feeling like I was wanted at this club, and they wanted the qualities that I bring, you know, at this club. I think uh, I obviously know some of the guys on the team as well, which is awesome, and that's a great, you know, help when you first start. And uh, yeah, I guess a lot of reasons, all the timing, and and it all just lined up, and this this really felt like the right decision. Now, about a year ago, you did a YouTube video, and some fans had questions for you, and somebody asked, "Are you better?" on the wing or in the middle and you said that you liked both it just depended on the style of the team that you were with so i'm going to ask you now do you think that you're better on the wing or in the middle <laughs> yeah that's a good question i think uh <laughs> i think you know it being just my first week here i've been playing more you know more on the wing um which i feel very comfortable in but i think uh you know we'll see i'll get some opportunities potentially in different positions in these couple preseason games and I think I'll definitely be able to give you a, you know, a better answer um, in, in a couple weeks time. Good. So how do you like to play and how does that fit the style there? Yeah, so for me, I think I'm just a very, um, you know, very direct, very aggressive, um, creative player. Um, I like to go, you know, straight to goal and just keep, you know, keep the other team on their, on, you know, on their heels and, uh, you know, make, you know, cause problems in that sense. I like to score goals and create, you know, assists and, um, that's definitely what I bring and I, and I want to I think that's you know reason why they brought me here and I hope to that I can showcase you know those skills um, um, for this club when you were just talking about what it is like for you to be there you use the term fresh start and I think that's great how has that felt for you mentally to be in a place where it feels like such a fresh start yeah I think I'm in a, a great place um, mentally I think um, you know there was definitely some ups and downs in my recent years of my previous club um, some great memories that I'll take with me but I'm definitely excited about this uh, about this fresh start and uh, yeah I think it's just um, I don't know it, it's it's a new opportunity to uh, to you know become you know an important member of this team and hopefully um, you know be a regular and um, you know get lots of minutes and uh, you know be a, be a big part of this team moving forward 
Absolutely. Uh, and we have, you know, we've moved on to new opportunities. So I don't want to harp on your past too much. But there is one quote that I want to ask you about because I thought it was really interesting. When discussing your time with Chelsea and what you're doing now with AC Milan, you said it's a new opportunity. And for me in recent years, I haven't gotten the opportunity I wanted and haven't reached the level that I want to be at. What is the opportunity that you feel like you got? And what's the opportunity that you wanted? Yeah, I think, um, you know, what I, what I want is, of course, is regular game time, which, of course, you have to earn. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm going to do my best to, to, you know, to train hard and play well and hopefully earn, earn more time here. And uh, it's not to say that, um, you, know, I'm, you know, I'm complaining or anything about, you know, in the previous um, years why I, wasn't, why I wasn't playing or this or that. But now I have a fresh opportunity and I, I really want to just go after it because as players, um, it's why we do what we do. We want to be on that field and, and we want to play because we're, we're very competitive. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you're looking to prove with AC Milan that you maybe weren't able to any other time? I think, I think um, for me it's, it's more so about consistency. It's, it's being that, um, you know, that player um, that can constantly, you know, create goals and, and be a big part of the team and, and doing that consistently. I think I had great spurs of it in, in, you know, in, uh, in London and uh, some really great moments, but just, uh, just doing, it, doing it week in, week out, like I said. Amazing. Okay, well, switching gears just a little bit, I don't know if you can see this photo. I know you're familiar with the photo, um, but it is you when you are in the hospital bed, the Snapchat filter. Tell me the story of this photo from your point of view. Yeah, um, that photo wasn't really supposed to get out, but uh, <laughs> from my point of view, um, I, I went straight to the hospital like at halftime of that, you know, of, of that game, um, which I was all kind of in a bit of shock in that moment. I, I didn't really know what was going on, um, but as I, as I went there, um, I, I was streaming it on one of our, you know, one of our physios' um, phones, and he was, I was watching the game and. Um, we were just watching anxiously, just waiting for that final whistle. And, and once it went off, um, the emotions were, were massive for me. It was a huge win for our country and uh, just a really proud moment. Uh, obviously, you can see my emotions there. <laughs> Yeah, no, it is a great photo and it was such like a nice viral moment online at that time. But I'm so curious, so the photo wasn't supposed to go out. You were sending it to what, friends, teammates, family? And then what happened? I think I, I think I just put that on one of my like, yeah, I don't know, private stories or something. And it, yeah. it got out somewhere, but um, <laughs> I don't really know the whole story. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey it, it could be worse because at least that was a great moment. Uh, I love that yeah. photo. Um, but speaking of the U.S. men's national team, okay, scale of one to ten, how excited were you when you found out that you all were going to have Flo Balogun? Yeah, we were. We were thrilled, of course. Obviously, he had you know such a successful season, and uh, he just brings so much, so much to our team, and he's just such a talented player. So um, obviously just phenomenal and, and you know, gonna be a big part of our team moving forward. So um, it was great to have him and you know, he already was able to impact the game and score. And uh, um, yeah, we love having him. Yeah, and he could have played elsewhere. So what do you think it says about the future of the US men's national team that they were able to draw him? I mean, I think it speaks for how far this team has come. Um, you know, in the last, you know, in the last recent years, um, but uh, I think I think we're going to be a real force, you know, moving into these next competitions and going into the next World Cup. I think people have already seen, you know, we, we've shocked a lot of people and really changed the view um, of the way, you know, people see American soccer. And uh, obviously, you know, after a pretty strong World Cup, um, you know, he probably saw, you know, a young, a hungry team, one that uh, has a lot of talent. And, uh, you know, he's he's just going to help that along. What conversations have you had with him, if any, about what you all uh, could potentially accomplish? Yeah, so, um, I mean, speaking with him right away from that first camp, um, we know what's ahead of us. We, you know, we, we obviously were taking it game by game. We wanted to win this Nations League. Um, and, uh, yeah, the next step is obviously, you know, Copa America coming up and then the World Cup. I think we want to go and advance as far as we can. And uh, we want to win trophies and, uh, you know, we want to win major competitions. So that's that's the next step for us. 
Amazing. Well, we, of course, will all be rooting for you all to do just that. Um, I want to take a moment to celebrate Megan Rapino, obviously an absolute legend. How has her presence impacted U.S. soccer generally? Yeah, well, I think, uh, you know, a lot of people look up, look up to her and uh, not just her, but the whole women's team. Um, you know, I just arrived on a, on a long flight and as soon as I landed, I was tuned in watching the, you know, their game yesterday, um, watching, uh, watching the women play and uh, obviously they've been, you know, so successful. So it's, uh, it just brings a lot of buzz around the game and, uh, you know, M Americans definitely love watching World Cup. So it's, it's, it's definitely exciting being here as well during this time. And uh, yeah, excited to follow them and hoping they can, uh, they can you know, hopefully win it again. Yeah, certainly a lot of amazing soccer has been on lately. I'm sure you, if you weren't watching the actual game, you saw Messi's goal and his debut in Miami. What did you just realize about Messi's greatness in that moment? Because it was crazy. Yeah, uh, definitely. It's just like one of those things where you see it and it's just like, of course it happened that way. You know, it's just like. <laughs> It almost doesn't surprise you anymore. I mean, what what you know, what we've seen from him in the past, you know, decade even more. Um, you know, what he's accomplished, what he continues to do, the World Cup finally, and now him coming in like that, and uh, you know, seeing all the you know the stars watching him play and him coming in and scoring like that. It really just doesn't surprise me anymore. But uh, <laughs> it's still special nonetheless. Just watching him. Um, just creating magic on the field always. So it's pretty cool to have him here in this country as well. And I know a lot of people are excited about that. What did people not realize about just how hard what he did was? I mean, it's not easy to score a free kick like that in the last <laughs> minute. Um, I mean, it's just, I'm sure it's something that he's just practiced over and over and over again. And for him, um, you know, he's so, he's so used to the big moments and, uh, you know, for him, that's that's probably nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Your mom shared a story about you when you were two years old that I was reading about. She said that when you were coloring, you would go out of the lines. It would frustrate you so much that she had to buy you white out for you to continue to color. What do you think that says about maybe your want for, perfect, for perfection? And does that want for, for perfection still bleed into your adult life? Yeah. Um, I, I've definitely always been that way. Um, it, it definitely, it definitely has stuck with me. It, I think it's a big part of why you know why I've been you know successful, and um, it's also you know maybe something that holds me back because I, I constantly um, you know push to be you know to be a perfectionist to be to be the best I can be, um, and uh, that's always going to be just a part of a part of who I am. Yeah, I mean I love it. You're two years old and you don't want to be outside the lines. Um, and I think that in a lot of ways, you know, soccer players are incredibly fascinating to me because so early in your life, it feels like there's always so many expectations and you start this so incredibly early. How did this sport almost shape, not necessarily your identity, but how you view everything else, if that makes sense? Yeah, I, that's a big question. I think uh, I think it's just been a part of my life ever since I can remember. Um, I've loved this game obviously since I was a kid, and it has definitely you know kind of molded me into into who I am. It's been a part of my life, you know, as long as I can remember. Um, I've learned a lot of lessons just you know being in a team with all different kinds of coaches and um, playing in all different countries and all different styles of the game. Um, it's definitely. It's definitely shaped me, you know, to who I, you know, into who I am today. Um, yeah, I don't really know how else to, to answer that question, but, but just to say it's been, it's, been, it's been in every step of my life. So it's, uh, it's just become so prominent in my life that it's just like second nature for me. It's, it's my personal life and it's the soccer. It's right there. Yeah. You mentioned how you think maybe perfectionism bleeds into things a little bit now. In what ways? Do you have any examples? I mean, I, you know, I can just think of it in the way that I train, you know, over the summer, um, you know, obviously I take a few days off and then I'm right back into it and um, I'm working on things over and over and over until I get it right consistently. That's just, uh, that's the way that I work. And if I do it wrong, I, I'm never going to end like that. Um, it's got to be right. It's got to be, you know, I got to do it the right way, you know, consistently. And then 
once I'm feeling good about it, then I can then I can kind of move on. Okay, so right now, what are you working on mentally, and what are you working on physically? You know, mentally, I think I think I'm trying to um, kind of really jump into this new culture with this new move. Um, I think you know it's very easy to kind of stick to what you know and 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 try to. Uh, um, just just get by and, and you know obviously I'm naturally just an introverted person so I think what I'm trying to do is go a little bit outside of my comfort zone and kind of open up and just try a bunch of new things and uh, be open to this new change um, for me that's that's definitely what I'm doing and then obviously physically is uh, is getting myself fit 100% and ready to go for this season um, so that once the games come around I'll be you know hopefully ready to be you know to run 90 minutes. I love it. And I also saw you working on your Italian. How's that going? We form in sentences. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're working on it. Um, <laughs> I haven't, I'll start more lessons once I'm back in Italy now, but I've definitely already started on some of the apps and uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do my best to learn. Amazing. All right. Last one for you. Uh, if your life was a book and it had chapters, what would you title this chapter that you're in right now? Hmm. I, I guess, I guess we could use like what we said before with kind of just like a fresh start uh, would be it would be a good term. Um, yeah, well, I'll keep it simple. I'll go with that. I love that fresh start. Well, you were a joy. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your time. Um, I would be remiss if I did not thank our dear friend Urban for all the help that he gave me answering all my soccer questions. Uh, but this was so great. And I look forward uh, to watching you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.